Often when we do our swimmer beginner videos, we get the criticism that they aren't beginner enough. And we get it because it's the nature of triathlon. A lot of people start it without really thinking about the swim and then they've got to learn to swim and they haven't swum for 15, 20, maybe 30 years since they tried to do a length in the pool. We understand and we're here to help you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through what you should do that very first time you get in the pool on your triathlon journey. Maybe you've done breaststroke before and you wanna to switch to freestyle, or maybe this is literally the first time you're getting in the pool. We're here to help. We're gonna start this with the very basics. Some of these steps may feel too easy and not even relevant to swimming, but try each and make sure you're comfortable doing each before moving on. If you're uncomfortable putting your face in the water, then with goggles on, simply hold the wall and put your face in the water and blow some bubbles. Breathe in as you lift your head and repeat, breathing out under the water and in above the surface. Practice keeping your eyes open too, as if you aren't used to your goggles, you'll automatically close them under the water. This exercise will help you get comfortable with your face submerged and will begin the breathing skills you need to swim efficiently. Once comfortable with this, starting against the wall, sink and pull the legs up, push off the wall in a streamlined position, holding this position for as long as possible as you slow down. Once you stop, relax, turn around and return to the wall in any way that's comfortable. You can repeat this a few times until it is comfortable. To progress from this, do the same, remembering to keep your head down, but now adding a small free kick until out of air. This kick should be a small flutter of the feet with very little knee bend. Once out of air, relax and return to the wall. If you find your feet are sinking, you can add some small fins. Our next progression is to add one arm pull. We'll do the same push off the wall, kick lightly, and as you slow down, pull with one arm under the water to the hip. This should feel like you're curling your whole arm over a barrel before pushing to the hip. When your hand reaches your hip, you can stop, breathe, and return to the wall. Do this a few times and then repeat it trying to use the other arm a few times too. Once you're comfortable doing this and it is beginning to feel less awkward, try to also rotate the hips while you pull. Before you move your arm, twist your hip down and then as you start pulling with your arm, twist the same side hip back up towards the surface, almost as if you're moving your hip out of the way of the hand that is now coming towards it. This is important as it allows you to use the larger muscle groups to pull, making you more efficient. You may be getting bored of stopping and returning to the wall by now, but it is worth it. Spend some time getting this right before you progress to the next step. The next step is completing the entire arm cycle. So instead of stopping your hand at the hip, pull it out of the water and through the air back to the start point. At first, this might throw your balance off, but you will get it with some practice. Once you can do this without unbalancing, you can try continuing to kick on your stomach after you've completed the arm cycle. Of course, you could then immediately repeat the arm cycle with the other arm. Do this many, many, many times and make sure you're very comfortable with it, remembering to rotate the hips as you move the arms. Over many practices, you'll get the feel for the timing of the hip rotation. After one or two arm cycles, you'll probably be running out of air, if you haven't already, so it's time to try breathing. As you pull your right arm through underneath you and you rotate your right hip up and out the water, stay there on your side, turning your face out of the water, sucking some air in, then rotate back to your stomach. The next time, do the same, but as you rotate back to your stomach, bring the right arm through the air above your head to the start position. Turn your face back to the water as you bring the arm back to the start position. Do the same on the other side, remembering to breathe out under the water so you have space in your lungs for that next inhalation. Once you can do this comfortably on both sides, you can keep this one arm at a time drill going across the entire pool and you can speed up the transition from left arm to right arm, starting the right arm just before the left reaches the start point. This should feel quite natural as your hip rotation encourages you to start the other arm as the moving arm returns through the air. Keep it up until you can get to the other side of the pool, remembering to take breaks often and concentrate on all the points you have learned so far. If it starts to feel awkward again, go back a few steps or all the way back to the first step and build it up again slowly. 
This may seem painfully slow progress, but stick with it as these are the building blocks that your entire swim future will be built on. Kids will do these drills for years as they learn to swim, and even Olympic swimmers will still do one-arm drills and rotation drills regularly. Once you've run through all of those steps, you're now swimming. We'd suggest that you keep doing this every time you go to the pool, adding those steps, maybe running through them quicker and quicker until you're comfortable covering a fair, fair distance. Only then start thinking about adding some speed. And in time, you'll get more and more comfortable. You can start skipping the first steps. If you enjoyed this video or you want to follow the rest of the series, we're going to start adding all the little bits of the stroke together so that you know how to build the perfect freestyle stroke. Remember to like and subscribe and don't miss the rest of the series.